Good evening from Abu Dhabi, the UAE. Um, thank you very much, Fad, for inviting me to um, participate in this fireside discussion. Um, I'll take a moment just to share a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Althea Davis. I'm the managing partner and chief data officer of Turnkey uh, Technologies. We are the world's first uh, chief data officer led data management consultancy. And we are thrilled to collaborate with the BII world on this summit and uh, participate in uh, this particular um, discussion. Um, I have been participating also with the BII world for a couple of different uh, summits. Um, and I come to it with a keen eye as a, you know, serial chief data officer, mainly working in European banks and insurance companies and, um, and having led uh, global teams. So I'm everything about data first, um, but I do appreciate that all the assets that companies have need to be used in order to be competitive in this uh, information economy. So I think that's it for me. Um, is there anything else you would like me to bring up, Fad? Or would you like to take over? I would love to take over, Althea, but I would request you to carry on with the conversation because I'm waiting for the Director General to enter. Apparently, uh, her, the, there seems to be a bit of a miscommunication where the staff thinks it's balloon. Where he has he, where has it supposed to be? Ah, uh, okay. All right, so balloon, <laughs> Zoom, Zoom is what we're looking at. So Zoom is the actual uh, platform. So come on, Zoom. It's, so, yeah, it's on, on Zoom. I think they're working on it. I, I got some text as well. So um, maybe uh, I can also announce that besides BII World as a media partner uh, for uh, Turnkey Technologies, we also work together with CDO Magazine. That's a global online publication dedicated to the data leaders, uh, global data leaders um, uh, from around the world, uh, not only to give them a voice, but also to create a open dialogue between other C-suite uh, staff and the CDOs. Um, and in addition to that, I am also a board member of the International Society for Chief Data Officers. Um, that is uh, both organizations, the CDO Magazine, the um, International Society for Chief Data Officers, uh, the Institute for Chief Data Officers. They are all patroned by MIT and were kicked off by uh, the one and only um, Dr. Richard Wang. And the mission of all these organizations is to uh, promote uh, data leadership and ensure that the position and the, the function of data matures to the level that it can be totally uh, productive for our modern society, both for government uh, populations and of course, uh, industry and, and commerce. Um, so those organizations, we work very closely together and being a board member on International uh, Society for Chief Data Officers, and also being an editorial board member for the CDO magazine, we were able to think up a way to bring the global voices into the magazine. And we are launching um, this autumn, the African and Middle Eastern channel for the CDO magazine. So we will welcome uh, having uh, all sorts of voices from the continent of Africa and also from the Middle Eastern region, um, both uh, data leaders, so chief data officers, but of course the rest of the C-suite so that we can have a very uh, vivid conversation um, in order to promote uh, the data leadership is relevant sig and, and incredibly significant. Okay, I will um, maybe hand it back here, checking with Fad to see how we are. Uh, 
uh, Fad, I think, is busy. <laughs> anyway, I think we need to wait one moment. Althea, you may carry on with the conversation. Okay, not a problem. Um, well, since I have the mic, okay, I will um, give a little bit of a highlight of what we intend to discuss today with His Excellency. Um, we're going to be having a look at what we're calling digital transformation. Um, Instead of having the technology lens, we're going to have the lens of, you know, digital transformation being everything about new business models. So what does that mean? It's, it's pretty common for the media and for those of us in, in government and in commercial organizations to speak about transformation and um, you know, allocate it to the realm of the technologists and the IT uh, leadership. Um, that's how it came onto the stage. But as you know, world has gone on and we've had our collective experience, I think more and more, um, all of us professionals realize that this is something much more fundamental than um, a technology exercise. So today in our discussion, we're going to explore some of the other things that are highly relevant in order to achieve digital, digital transformation and eventually digital excellence as a means to an end. And we'll focus a little bit more on those ends. Hi. Fad, let's see if Fad is back. Let's give him one moment. So it's not the technology fault. I think it's a little communication problem, but we'll sort it out very quickly. Sorry about that audience and uh, people on the panel.
Ladies and gentlemen, if technology had a neck, I would have definitely strangled technology. <laughs> I would have definitely strangled technology. And ladies and gentlemen, with all utmost heart and with affection, with a lot of love from Pakistan, because I'm sitting in Pakistan, and with a lot of love from UAE, Abu Dhabi, that's my birth city, I welcome <laughs> on, on screen His Excellency, the Director General of the National Identity Management Commission for the, for the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Engineer Aliyo Aziz Abubakar, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Technology has been in, in between us, sir. <laughs> but it is such a pleasure to have you with us, sir. And sir, we, 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 we are really looking forward to, your, to the next uh, 30 minutes of our time with you. And ladies and gentlemen, please, please uh, let us hear those round, that round of applause for welcoming uh, <laughs> the, 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 our dearest Director General. Sir, uh, Dr. Uh, Althea, please, over to you. You can take the, the conversation forward. Perfect. First of all, welcome, Your Excellency. Welcome. Sorry, Your Excellency, you're on mute. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The technology plays its tricks. Sorry for that. Our dearest director. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, Althea, please, over to you. You can take the, the conversation. Uh, your, your, your Excellency, Perfect. if you can please uh, turn Welcome. off the balloon Perfect. platform Welcome. on uh, ah. device or wherever it is, because Excellent. that is giving a feedback. Yeah. Just turn it off, the balloon platform. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thank you. The technology yeah, just please cancel the balloon platform. Just uh, end it. Yes. Thank you. Or if your colleagues are in the office, if you may ask them to turn off the platform. There's so much. There's so much. Yeah. Thank you. There's so much noise from the balloon platform. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's so much. Your Excellency. You are now on Zoom live, um, but you have another platform on called Balloon. We need you to shut the balloon, like leave Balloon. Give you a minute to do that. Ah, I think you got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got it now. Sorry, it was so confusing. No I problem. Think. No problem. We'll start again. Well, First it's of the, all, it's the technology, sometimes it does that. It's okay. With Sorry communication, for, with communication yeah. and some data, yeah. reliable data, we get there. Okay? Sure, sure, sure. 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 So let's start again. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. I know that you have made an incredible effort to be here this evening. So we yes. very much thank you for your efforts and we are going to make the best use of your time and make it enjoyable for you as well. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Thank you. So yeah. without further ado, Your Excellency, we're going to talk tonight about digital transformation. But we're going to speak about it from the perspective of digital transformation being all about a new business model instead of being about a new technology. So we're gonna go through a series of four questions and give you all the space and time to be able to address those questions with your thoughts and your perspective um, on these topics. So without further ado, we're going to start. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We are very happy to have you, sir. Absolutely. So starting with the first question, why is customer centricity so significant 
in order to embrace, to be embraced while adapting uh, a digital transformed model, business model. Why is that, sir? Yeah, thank, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to apologize for the minister's inability to be with you because he traveled to Abidjan and mm -hmm. also had a series of meetings. So he asked me to be with you. So I'm, I'm really the privileged and delighted mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be part of the uh, 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 closing keynote on yes. the digital, digital transformation and mm -hmm. also that uh, it's rather business model than the technology itself. And as mm -hmm. you can see, before we start too, the technology fell us. So, but uh, thanks for being patient to mm -hmm. listen to, to me. So as you can see that it's digital transformation that we've been talking about. And mm -hmm. that di digital is the, is the technology aspect of the equation, while mm -hmm. the trans transformation have to do with the business models and, mm -hmm. and what we have. So for co customer centricity, uh, the, there's the saying that the customer is always the king. That is mm -hmm. what we knew before. And mm -hmm. it, is, it is the truth that, mm -hmm. uh, that will be constant. So mm -hmm. every business that wants to succeed, mm -hmm. grow, and ultimately make profit must mm -hmm. be customer-centric. And even though creating value is seen as the main reason companies go into business, however, people are in business to gain customers, keep mm -hmm. those customers, and attract new customers. This goes to show that you must know your customers, understand their, their needs, that mm -hmm. you must also, uh, also feel their pulse, mm -hmm. uh, identify the, check the signal and mm -hmm. take the signal away from the, from the noise, get in touch with their hearts and mm -hmm. their test to really provide the experience and satisfaction. And mm -hmm. that creating, the culture of giving the customer the best experience uh, mm -hmm. ever should be the focus of businesses. And in mm -hmm. so doing, you also build brand loyalty mm -hmm. and customers should be at the center of a business idea, operations mm -hmm. and the philosophy, even mm -hmm. as we create innovative uh, business models using digital uh, practice platform. So designing with user experience in mind, mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. customer preferences and needs, mm -hmm. and building lasting relationships and creating meaningful experiences will continue to be the option to adopt while adapting to a di digital transform model. So in this 21st mm -hmm. century, an organization have to shift or position mm -hmm. itself whereby mm -hmm. it should understand the customer uh, value. Then it should mm -hmm. then prepare to be agile and uh, provide services at that uh, transformed uh, position. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. This is really um, a profound uh, statement because many organizations, governmental and commercial alike, are yes. still approaching digitalization as a technology exercise. And yes. unfortunately, they are facing the roadblocks of extremely high cost, yep. uh, extremely res extreme resilience to the digitalization from the people, yes. the organization, the culture, yeah. and very low value. So yes, sustainability, yeah. scalability is, is, is not what they're, they're not reaping that. So it's very important yeah. your insight on that. Exactly. Well, as you, as you know, in, in digital transformation, you have uh, 
is an umbrella of like three uh, uh, streams, mm -hmm. like uh, what enables the organization. So even what enables the organization, there are like five important things. It's mm -hmm. only a, among that five things that you find mm -hmm. the IT management yes. that is there. Mm -hmm. Amongst that five, you have the business process itself, mm -hmm. project, project and program management. You have yes. change management and mm -hmm. also the, the, the uh, competencies of the mm -hmm. organization. So those five things enable the organization to get into the transformation platform. But above it, then you need mm -hmm. the direction. And in yes. that direction, that is where your strategy mm -hmm. and the vi values and mm -hmm. risk management will yeah. then come. Then on top of everything, that is the mm -hmm. meta aspect of leadership, then right. the culture of the organization mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. communication, just the way that we are doing it, that will yes. now make it possible. So until when you take all these nine uh, mm -hmm. uh, management uh, perspective, then yes. you should be in a better position to have a uh, digital transformation. As the, as the saying goes, that mm -hmm. when a snake sheds its skin, then mm -hmm. that is change. Mm -hmm. But when a caterpillar changes to a butterfly, so that mm -hmm. is transformation. So yes. we are all looking forward to transformation rather than mm -hmm. just talking about change. Only. Change, exactly. Yeah. I love that metaphor. That's you know, you know, um, with the snake and the but the 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 caterpillar metaphor yeah. metaphorically mm -hmm. going into beautiful. So Butter. yes. Yes. Yeah. So going into looking at, for example, your organization, the National yeah. Identity Management Commission, um, yes. I was reading that you as a as a group uh, have accomplished a, a very big accomplishment in July, just last month, where you reached yeah. the six, 60 million unique NIN records. Now, yes. I looked at that and said, wow, that's a lot. That's wonderful. Yeah. But then yeah. somebody who is Nigerian yes. reminded me that there are 200 million Nigerians. Yeah. Yeah. And being, yeah. uh, being a, a data person that I am, yes. I know there's a lot of data points for one person. So. Yeah. Leading into my second question, how does data and analytics impact the quality of decisions and the customer experience? For example, yes. with your exercise with the NIN records. Yes. Yeah, so thank you very much. So the NIA is like the social security number that you know yes. in the US or the mm -hmm. NIA in the in UK or mm -hmm. people from uh, the your own part will know India has at her number. So that yes. is what national identification number. So it's mm -hmm. a foundational identity. Mm -hmm. Before we used to take a lot of data. So, but we reduce the data to just mm -hmm. the, uh, solve the problem of who are you. Yes, and, identity. And then we change from collecting more than 83 fields of data to only 10 mm -hmm. because we needed the uniqueness of the mm -hmm. person. So mm -hmm. it's digital that the number is digital, mm -hmm. but the uniqueness of the person comes from the biometrics. So yes. the fingerprints, the mm -hmm. face, and the, the iris. That the makes iris. The, 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 the uniqueness of the person. Therefore, right. And because we are late in collating data, and as you rightly said, we are more than 200 million. Mm -hmm. so, yes. so before we were focusing on identity card, which is a mm. talk. So we have now reversed to focus on this national identification number. Therefore, yes. we have seen accelerated growth. Yes. So between for the past five years, we started at 7 million. And our mm -hmm. strategy was 
10x. So, mm-hmm. but the reality was like we were moving at 2x. So yes. in fairness, <laughs> yes. we we doubled the seven million to fourteen million, and in yes. twenty seventeen we doubled the fourteen to twenty eight million. So that yes. is what takes us to yes. this uh, sixty million. And between yes. last year, this year, yes. when we moved to the uh, new uh, ministry of mm-hmm. communications and digital economy, economy, and yes. We accelerated by about 20 million, which is uh, which is un- unprecedented. Yes. But all what we are doing is to make this data unique. Yes. So on 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 our own data is more of like static data. Until mm-hmm. when this data is mm-hmm. now connected with yes. the remaining databases, then. Yes the name is used like an index and therefore yes. you, you should be able to connect with other databases. Then yes. you will not get to uh, the intelligence that we are talk, uh, thinking about. So mm-hmm. everyone knows that data is the new oil. In fact, yes. in some places it says that data is the new uh, air in the 21st century. Mm-hmm. And of course, it is considered great asset. Yes. And Fast becoming the new raw materials for, mm-hmm. for businesses. So we, mm-hmm. we provide this service to banks. We yes. provide service to to startups so that yes. they can they can authenticate the yes. person in front of them to provide services. And right. recently, also we linked it with the with the SIM registration. So mm-hmm. everything must have a name that yeah. is linked with, so that mm-hmm. we can allow, allow others to do work. So until when this data is connected with those other mm-hmm. data cases, so you mm-hmm. won't be able to now see the impact of mm-hmm. these uh, 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 analytics. But all mm-hmm. what we do is to make sure that the, every person is unique and yes. therefore can take proper decisions mm-hmm. like, uh, like we have been seeing that uh, applications like uh, in the COVID have shown to us that mm-hmm. without knowing, without knowing the people, you won't be able to give them the service. No. Otherwise, there will be so many uh, middlemen in yes. between that will want to uh, suck the system and, mm-hmm. and make it uh, uh, not uh, uh, acceptable. So to us, mm-hmm. that data plays a very critical role mm-hmm. in providing the insights for yes. policy and decision making. And right. Like um, we just concluded uh, the examination for 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 uh, that we call JAM for 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 students that are mm-hmm. getting ready to the mm-hmm. to go to the university and mm-hmm. and the number really helps to fight uh, uh, fraudulent fraud yes fraud in that mm-hmm. in that area. so the name is foundational for yes. all the sectors in the economy so and that is right. what we are building mm-hmm. and hopefully in the next one. Uh, two years with the mm-hmm. help of uh, the government and also mm-hmm. with the help of development partners too. The donors yes. too have come up and we mm-hmm. have uh, um, a lot of approval from our National Assembly last, just mm-hmm. last month, mm-hmm. up to $365 million to really mm-hmm. work on this, extend the system and conclude, mm-hmm. uh, conclude the project. It's very fascinating. And I think it's also very inspiring that the government is so visionary to deal with the foundational pieces of data that if you don't have that identification absolute, you cannot create all the fancy, exciting insights in analytics. You can't feed AI models. You can't run operations. So thank you very much for your insights on that. So look. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So looking at, you know, like you said, you're in this digital identity ecosystem. 
and yeah. you have you're part of the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy, right? This is a very big, ambitious vision. With yeah. that in mind, why are design thinking principles applied to define problems and solutions to meet the customer needs? And in this yeah. case, I suppose we're talking about governmental customers, meaning citizen customers, but we can yeah. also reflect on your dealings with the banking, the financial industry, and their customers. Yeah. We'd love yeah. to hear your insights, Excellency. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you very much. Well, the design thinking and the user experience, you understand, all of them um, have introduced a lot of the soft side of still knowing the customer mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and it questions the why it, mm -hmm. it looks at the heart of mm -hmm. the of the customer it you observe what really the mm -hmm. the customer uh, wants there's mm -hmm. a place that they they built they built a road and then they use pythagoras theorem and just just do a straight road but meanwhile <laughs> okay. yeah meanwhile the people go to one village before they go to that that other place so they are not following the the, the that new road they rather because they have another place to go to so without mm -hmm. checking people without observing the behavior of people we won't be able to then understand the customer centric so mm -hmm. it is like having a new way of thinking outside mm -hmm. the world. Yes. Promoting uh, empathy that is yes. focusing on the human side of things by mm -hmm. understanding the physical and emotional mm -hmm. needs of the people. Observing mm -hmm. things, like I said, people to get new insight mm -hmm. before even innovating or mm -hmm. creating. And it mm -hmm. reduces uh, errors, mm -hmm. like rework that you need yes. to do after that. And mm -hmm. understanding that change is inevitable and comes with risk of uncertainties and mm -hmm. obstacles. So, yes. and it allows also for us to quantify those uncertainties because, yes. uh, uh, and put them in the, the, in the design. Um, most of the or designs before this time used to be just linear, but we know there's mm -hmm. also exponential aspect. There are also um, nowadays you will see things that will even explode rather yes. than even uh, just uh, just uh, just linear. Therefore, mm -hmm. we have to harness a wall of free thinkers yes. and culture of open atmosphere for mm -hmm. imagination. So understanding these uh, principles mm -hmm. uh, will allow us to design systems that will be sustainable, systems that will disrupt mm -hmm. the, 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 the incumbents, mm -hmm. like in the banking industry too. Before you, mm -hmm. uh, you get a, a bank, you need to have large sum of money to get a license, you mm -hmm. need to have buildings and the rest of them. But right now we have fintechs, we have the neo banks that are yes. happening. We have banks that don't even have uh, uh, branches and all mm -hmm. they use, they use the technology. So designing those kind of system, disrupting mm -hmm. the, 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 the place or democratizing the information that we have, all mm -hmm. requires design thinking to approach. Otherwise, you will mm. just, uh, another analogy is like uh, 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 taking medication. If yes. you take medication, the doctors will tell you maybe after six hours, you will take another one. Why? Yeah. Because the first one that you have taken must yes. have reached a certain level of concentration and will start mm -hmm. to die. So yes. everything is like that. So when you take it the next six hours, so it reaches that concentration and you have that constant. So for you to have a system 
that, mm -hmm. uh, that needs constant concentration. Therefore, you have to have constant thinking and you have yes. to apply the design thinking principles to really be in business. I totally agree. Learning organization or else you are already dead. You just don't know it. <laughs> so exactly. Exactly. We, have a, we have a few questions. Um, uh, I will say this one is from Sebi Yabua. I hope I've pronounced the name correctly. My uh, apologies if I haven't. The question, yeah. Your Excellency, is regulators yeah. are trying to use regulations to get banks to devote a percentage of their asset portfolio to the MSMEs. FinTechs, yes. okay. FinTechs mm -hmm. have committed themselves to developing solutions to evaluate and credit score MSMEs to facilitate access to credit. To improve such access to credit dig digitally, sorry, there should exist a reliable credit reference bureau and an identification system that make it makes it impossible to escape reach when there is a default. I know that was a lot, <laughs> but I think the yeah, question yeah, yeah, yeah. to okay. improve the, the access to credit, credit digitally and yeah. this uh, existence of a credit reference bureau, what are your thoughts yeah. on that and the identification? Uh, yeah, system? yeah. Well, the, uh, the future, of course, is uh, is digital. And if you yes. are not doing anything, then actually you are moving uh, backwards. Mm -hmm. And that it is, the future is digital and also data driven. So mm -hmm. we all have to work together to build a vibrant uh, digital ecosystem that mm -hmm. supports innovation driven Mm -hmm. enterprises also micro small and medium mm -hmm. enterprises in a way that promotes creativity and entrepreneurship therefore yes. and having a credit system and also the identity as the question says is foundational mm -hmm. and for us for us what we built in addition to the to having the unique identity which is the NIN, we have also built a mobile uh, uh, um, uh, mobile uh, uh, a system, mm -hmm. and in that mobile system is linked to your also mobile telephone system. And yes. in that system, so we we build the credit system, uh, the scoring system that ah. is also linked the yes. uh, yeah. uh, identity yes. and. Therefore, by by having the unique identity alone, you yeah. already have certain high score. Yeah. So when you have a pass passport mm -hmm. attached to that, mm -hmm. you get more score. Yes. You have a BVA bank verification number, you have more and more scores. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that system will allow that credit system. And also it has also a verification system mm -hmm. in such a way that citizens can verify among themselves. Again, we are trying to remove uh, uh, remove uh, frictions yes. and, and also the system, the best part of the system is that it is blockchain uh, yes. uh, uh, a database that is behind yes. it. Therefore, yes. you can't, uh, you can't uh, it's uh, immutable. So you won't yes. change those transactions that really yeah. happen. So it's a combination of the unique identification, the yeah. mobile phone and the blockchain and the blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you can build many, many services on top of that uh, system. Yeah. Very, very clear. Thank you very much for that answer. And we're looking at the time. So there's one more very critical question here. Um, it's coming from the audience. So I'm going to take that one. I'm sure yeah. you're going to enjoy this one, Your Excellency. Just one mm -hmm. moment here. Um, we have, how well positioned is Nigeria in the implementation of biometric technology to enhance the ease and the security of digital payment transactions. 
Yeah. Well, uh, digital, when it comes to security, security is a moving, a moving target. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, with the combination of the, all the banks have their, have their unique numbers within the mm -hmm. banks themselves. Yes. And the umbrella of the whole banks itself from the CBN, mm -hmm. they have we have what we call the bank verification number. Yes. And that bank verification number, more than half of it already ha have NIN that is also linked to this, uh, this number. So mm -hmm. for those ones that are already linked mm -hmm. and the remaining ones too, following to, uh, the best practices that mm -hmm. we have, and mm -hmm. we already have an ecosystem that is mm -hmm. actually uh, unique, and also secure, and yes. also we follow best practices to make yes. sure that uh, all the cyber security measures, all the yeah. ISO specifications are there. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, Nigeria mm -hmm. also being very big and also having a lot of languages because yes. so we also, yes. we also infuse, infuse mm -hmm. our local languages mm -hmm. into our communications Mm -hmm. uh, to make it also that that unique, and yes. also we, we are we are uh, some of us are working like my own personal uh, language. We mm -hmm. we use base five in our computation. But mm -hmm. one of my colleagues from one state told me that in their language is mm -hmm. base twenty. So if mm -hmm. you can move use <laughs> this kind of languages. So it means that we are going to secure our system more mm -hmm. than uh, what we are inheriting. So mm -hmm. we, there's also a policy on uh, indigenization or mm -hmm. the, what they say in some other places, local content to make sure mm -hmm. that we, we infuse what we know what uh, the uh, uh, cap capabilities that we have from our local indigenous system mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. sure that those systems are also uh, secure. But we know security mm -hmm. is uh, is a moving target. We mm -hmm. are not going to be like um, uh, MIT that they will put a system and allow people all over the world to attack the system so that they can understand the behavior of the people and, yeah. and then build, you know, we, we will study those system and then use our own, um, our own local content to make sure yes. that those systems and, oh. and we also follow the best practices that mm -hmm. are really known. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you so much for your thoughts and your insight and sharing what you have done together with your team uh, at, at, the, at the ministry. And yeah. um, we want to really extend a great big thank you, Your Excellency, for taking the time and making this happen tonight. Uh, you don't know how happy Fad and I are. <laughs> because we were pushing for it so much. And please yeah. give our regards to um, his, his honorable minister um, once he returns. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. I will, uh, I, will, uh, I, I will extend your regards to the honorable minister and uh, let him know that it happened, but we had yeah. uh, Initial technological uh, <laughs> glitches, and mm -hmm. and that uh, and it shows that we need more of uh, business models than the yes. technology yeah. <laughs> and thank data. You <laughs> thank, yes, you. Yes. thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you so much. You. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Back yeah. to you, Fad. Back to you. Thank, thank you. you, thank so you, much. and thank you very much, uh, Honorable Director General. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable thank Director you. General. You're Ladies welcome. and gentlemen, that was the fifth Africa Bank 4.0 Summit, West Africa. It was indeed a roller coaster <laughs> ride. <laughs> I'm sure you all resonate with that, uh, but it was a good ride, no doubt about that. And. We've completed one full year. Actually, the, the first uh, edition took place uh, on the 26th and the 27th 
of August uh, last year as a virtual mm -hmm. event. And then we did the second in uh, the month of February, the third in uh, June. Last month was the fourth in July, and this is the fifth exclusive to the West Africa region. And yes. the, the priors they've been to other regions. A um, couple of uh, learnings, definitely I've been able to uh, digest from uh, the last two days. Uh, customer was, is, and will remain the king. But uh, yeah, they're not the boss, but um, it's critical that, uh, you know, banks like neo banks, I myself, although I'm based uh, in Pakistan right now, and I have uh, my uh, roots in uh, the UAE, and although there are two different markets, one is in an, one is an emerging market and another is uh, a developed market. Uh, I am a neo bank customer in both of the countries, and I have seen a difference. Uh, neo banks are far much more better than your traditional banks in terms of uh, uh, their approach and their uh, their approach to customer services and uh, their personalization. Uh, so that's where they're having the edge. Banks retail and digital banks, uh, retail banks, they need to uh, look upon uh, the positives that neo banks they bring. Neo banks are definitely very much tech focused, but they are not denying the human, uh, 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 the human approach. We've also realized that uh, uh, biometric ID, that is also another area that uh, uh, the continent, if not the entire region of West Africa, but the continent really seriously needs to consider uh, biometric IDs in terms of their transactions and payments. Uh, a wonderful presentation to this afternoon by Raj Singh on digital lending and why that is the future and why is that the quickest uh, option of, uh, for, uh, your, for your retail customers and your uh, micro customers to actually pick up a loan in, uh, in, in Warp Street. So there've been a lot of uh, conversations happening uh, throughout uh, the last couple of days, but I would like to finish it off by saying, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, do follow BII World on our social media channels. Uh, the presentations of all of the speakers that will be made available to every uh, attendee who attended the, the conference over the last two days. The recording of the last two days, including my goofy acts, they will be made available <laughs> as well. And uh, uh, only to the registered uh, delegates who have, and, and it'll be sent on to your registered emails. Uh, keep following BII World. Please do support our, our sponsors. The event was brought to you by BII World under the patronage of the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization, Ghana. We are also thankful to the Nigerian National Identity Management Commission, especially uh, to uh, His Excellency, the Director General, uh, Engineer Aziz, for, uh, for his contribution uh, at the event and for making uh, the event, in fact, um, uh, making the closing uh, the closing segment of the event, the the entire session that is uh, a, a memorable one in terms of all what he has discussed in lines with digital transformation, the business models, and with identity management. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ne we are taking a one and a half month break, and we will be back with the sixth Africa Bank 4.0 Summit, North Africa. Yes, the sixth. Africa Bank 4.0 Summit, North Africa in the month of October on October 26th and 27th. That is exclusive for the North African market, but you're more than, you're, you're, you are definitely welcome to attend. We will have Althea Davis at that event. And after that, we will be doing the second annual Middle East Bank Revolution Summit in the month of November on the 9th and the 10th of November. Both events are virtual event from Lahore, Pakistan, from Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, and from Niger and from Abuja, Nigeria. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Take care.